Hello and welcome to the Spiritual Unicorn Podcast. I am your host, Ali Star Dreamly. This podcast, I'm hoping to touch on things such as spirituality and sexuality. Um, I'm hoping to give my own experience as well as hopefully get others on to talk about their experience, tell stories that other people send me. Um, I want this to be a sort of open place. The reason I started this podcast really is I've always wanted to start a podcast and it's because I love to talk. I am a talker. Um, There are some days where talking's hard. You know, I have autism spectrum disorder, so some days it's really hard to verbally verbalize (laughs) what I want and need and what I'm thinking. So... I really love the idea of having this sort of platform to really embrace the talkative parts of me so that I can enjoy them while I have them so that when days come that are hard to sort of speak and verbalize what I want and need, um, I can remember it's temporary, and that I will get my voice back, um, so yeah, I guess this is a sort of little way to show myself how grateful I am for my voice, and hopefully this will become a platform where we all can share our voice and be heard, um, so yeah, in today's little intro episode, I'm just gonna talk a little about me, my spiritual journey, and sexuality. So, where to begin? I grew up believing in magic, 100%. Um, I didn't stop believing in Santa Claus until um, like middle school. <laughs> I've always had a very big imagination and creativity. I was surrounded by very, I guess how I want to put this is, my mom was always very, my mom allowed us to be very open to spirituality and beliefs. I think, for my mom, I feel like she always wanted us to make our own choices. So she never pushed anything too hard on us. You know, we weren't Christian. We didn't go to church. But when my friends would go to church and invite me, she would allow me to go. It wasn't like we... It was like we were allowed to experience all these different aspects of life, um, or at least spiritual wise. And, um, so I went to church a few times with some friends. None of it never really made sense to me. Um, a lot of times I just wanted to go home. (laughs) Um, and for me, I always wanted to be a witch. Ever since I was a kid, I loved shows about witches. I loved anything having to do with witches. And my family, I always say, you know, I grew up pagan. Because technically that's... If I were to put a label on what it was like to grow up, if we're talking just spiritual, religion-wise, I'd say we were pagan. You know, my mom has tarot cards. She'd read tarot cards sometimes. Um, she still does, um, (laughs) you know, crystals, moon water, spells, all this stuff that was talked about in a sort a very authentic and real way, you know, my mom, I remember her telling me, like, magic's real, but it's not like Harry Potter or Charmed, (laughs) it's a lot more based in reality than that 
Um, so that's what I grew up with is this very grounded idea of magic. They believe in angels. Um, I do too. Um, I believe in, honestly, my beliefs are there's truth to everything and everything is kind of real. Um, you know, I, I believe in fairies. I believe in Bigfoot. I believe in aliens. I believe in vampires. I believe in everything that's ever been told to us as kids is these little fun stories or around the campfire to scare each other. I believe it's all true. And I believe it because it just all, I don't see why it wouldn't be. I feel like these myths and urban legends, they exist for a reason and there's truth to all of them. Um, and we have to just be open, you know? I've always just been taught to be open. Be open to other people, be open to their beliefs, um, and to form your own based on what you agree with and what you don't. Um, and I'm very grateful for growing up that way because I think that's what's kind of formed me to believe there is truth to everything because there is a lot I resonate with with almost every religion, almost every spiritual walk of life, almost every Wiccan book I've read, all these different types of ways of believing and connecting with something bigger and higher than ourselves. Um, I've just felt the connection to all of it. And I think that's why I believe it's everything has some truth. You know, I... It's not to say that instantly everything is true. It's just that I think there's a little truth to everything. You know, I believe there's fairies, but maybe they aren't what we picture. I believe there are there's Bigfoot. I, maybe he's different from what we picture. I'm kind of rambling. I'm realizing. But I don't know. Isn't that, I guess this is kind of what the podcast is about, is me just rambling off about spirituality and sexuality. <laughs> um, I originally wanted this to be called The Unicorn Chronicles, and I was just going to talk about my sexual endeavors, but I feel like Lately, when I've been going on these sexual endeavors, I feel like I'm reconnecting to my spiritual side. And I feel like there's a big connection between my sexuality and my spiritual side. Um, so for me, I don't know, it just makes sense to have a podcast that kind of intertwines them. And it allows me to talk a more topic than just sexual stuff or just spirituality. I get to kind of talk about these two. And I also get to talk about how they integrate and how they don't. And get to hear from other people what they think. I've always had a connection to the spiritual side. Um, so I think right now I'm literally just going with the flow here. But my brain is telling me to go into this and focus on the spiritual aspect right here, right now. So I'm going to listen to that. And really, I guess to start is saying I am an empath. My whole life, I was told I was an empath. And as I got older, it became a struggle of like, am I an empath or am I just really sensitive to shit? <laughs> um, and I think it's a mixture of both now that I'm older, now that I've lived 24 years. So, you know, still young, a lot to learn. Um, but so far I'm starting to realize that it's kind of both, you know. I am really sensitive. My autism makes me very sensitive to sound, light just fucking everything. The other day I had a really frustrating day 
and I just, everything was so loud. Everything was so fucking loud. And it's like my headphones were on the opposite side of the room and I forgot to turn my music off and I kept hearing what sounded like a bee buzzing. And my headphones weren't turned up even that loud. And I had to walk over and turn them off and I was just like, oh my God, that was driving me crazy. So it's like I am very sensitive. But at the same time, I also am 100% empath. Um, I f- literally feel what other people are feeling I can take it on and I can take it on for days hours weeks I take it on and I know this I know it because when I was a kid um yeah I was a pretty fucked up kid (laughs) a little weird had a lot of mental issues I still do (laughs) but I don't think I was, like, super depressed until, like, my teen years. I think that's when I started to become really depressed. Um, When I was a child, I don't remember being that depressed. Except for once. One time, I was just really depressed, like, every day. I didn't know why. I kept telling my mom, I was like, I don't know why. I'm just really sad. It doesn't make sense. And then the neighbor across the street killed himself. And all of a sudden, I felt better. Still to this day, my mom, me, we, my family, we believe that I was, I was feeling him. That I was feeling his emotions from across the way, from across the street. That he had been really depressed for quite a while and that he got so depressed that I started picking it up stuff like this would happen throughout my life you know moments where I just kind of feel something and it didn't make sense to what was going on or didn't really feel like me and then I'd realize it was someone else. Um, me and my mom, we pick up on each other all the time. <laughs> um, there's this one time, an actual most recent case, with what I like to call the spiritual energy vampire. These motherfuckers are a different breed. They're a fucking different breed of energy vampire. They're the kind that will tell you, oh, I'm so spiritual. Like, I have no ego at all. I am veiled, baby. I am perfect. And they will literally drone on and on and on about this shit. And by the end of the day, you're feeling just drained. While at the same time, just so... Okay. So basically, this guy, this energy spiritual vampire. I was working with him... And the entire day, he just talked and talked and talked and talked about spiritual stuff. And I was, at first, I was like, fuck yeah. This is great. I love this type of conversation. Let's fucking do this. But he just, like, was not respectful. He mansplained to me, like, a billion times. Treated me like I was an idiot. And obviously had no care for what I had to say. So whether this guy realized it or not... He was like sucking me dry of energy. By the end of the day, I was exhausted. And yet when I got in my mom's car to go home, it was like I all of a sudden got this burst of energy and fucking couldn't sit still, couldn't stop talking. It was like I had absorbed some of his energy and it was stuck with me. And there was something about it that felt so spiritually, like, what's the word? Spiritual, oh, the word's on the tip of my tongue. I felt assaulted, honestly. It was like a spiritual assault. It was like he drained me of his energy. And then, like, because I'm an empath, I also kind of absorbed some of his 
draining fucking energy. And it was like I was, I went home and I was like, I had to cleanse myself in the shower. I had to cleanse myself with smoke. I had to cleanse myself in every way because this guy was like, it's like his energy attached itself to me. And it's like it was leeching off of me. And so I literally, the next day, I packed all my pockets with crystals. And I freaking am shielding myself like crazy. I'm calling on every fucking spirit guide I have. And I'm like, listen, I'm putting my headphones in all day. Just keep this guy's energy to himself. Literally ignored this guy all day. I put in my headphones. I kind of just nodded and uh huh at stuff he said. And I just did everything I could to give him no attention. And I went home and I felt like me. It was like, uh, I was really proud of myself because I was like, yes, I can block people out. But then it also pissed me off because I'm like, I shouldn't have to do that much work to block people out. Like, if you're going to talk about how spiritual you are and how you're shielded and all this shit, I just think he's full of bullshit. But there's also a part of me that just hopes that, you know, maybe he's at the beginning stage. Maybe he'll grow out of that spiritual vampire energy sucking shit. Maybe he'll actually make friends with this ego. Maybe he'll walk the talk one day. But there's part of me that's just kind of like this guy. It's just so hard. I I really don't know if he knows that he is this way, you know? You know, I think that there are people like this who don't realize how draining they are. And I think also a part of why it's hard for me is because I feel like I used to be kind of like that. I feel like I used to be a very draining vampire person and I feel like I've worked really hard to not be that way anymore and then when I come across people like that I just want to shake them and just be like you are not as spiritually fucking awoken as you think you are you have so much fucking more work to do stop talking the shit like you're fucking king of all fucking gods and witches like it no okay I stop (laughs) I get so worked up over this dude like some of his energy is still around and I just have an anger toward people like that I really do I don't like being treated like I don't know anything it's just funny to me the amount of people who will explain stuff to me that I grew up on like yeah I know how tarot cards work yeah I know how to shield myself which some people call veiling I was always told that veiling was the veil is the separation between the spirit world and our world and shielding is what you do to protect yourself from others energy again we all use different terminology we're all different it's totally cool if you don't vibe with that and you call it something else that's just what I grew up with and what I still to this day kind of resonate with and I I like that. I also like it because I am a Twilight girl. I grew up watching Twilight a lot. (laughs) I love fucking Twilight. And um, Twilight's actually what taught me to really visualize my shielding and protection. Um, It was always really hard for me growing up when my mom or my grandma was like, you need to shield yourself. You need to protect yourself. I could never visualize it. And I always felt weird. I'm like kind of stupid. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? That doesn't make sense. I can't, I can't do it. And then Twilight came out and, you know, like Breaking Dawn and stuff, you learn that Bella's a shield and she can sort of make the shield, there's a shield around her and she can push it out and protect others. And ever since that, I've just been really working with that imagery and I, it, it's just, it helps so much. And I literally shield is like this bubbly, clear beautiful little light bubble and I've worked really hard to make it strong and concrete it's not made of concrete but you get it and then you know I love the idea of getting to protect other people and I definitely I've played with that a bit and um 
I do think it's possible. Um, being an empath has made for an interesting journey. It's made for meeting interesting people. Um, I see the world in a different way. Um, when it comes to the spirit world, everything connected to that is very emotion based. I hear some things here and there, um, some whispers, some words, voices occasionally. I'll occasionally see an orb or a shadow, um, but a lot of my connection to the spirit world and talking to the spirit world is very much through feelings and emotions. Um, and it's been strange. You know, I can feel when a spirit enters or leaves a room. Um, this is a very, it's so, it's so weird. So the feeling of a spirit entering and leaving a room is the same feeling that I get when like someone turns on the TV. Now the thing is, is that I've learned is that autism and my autism, especially not all people, but with me and my sensory things that, you know, highly sensitive people, we tend to feel when stuff like that does turn, like there's a sensation that comes with electronics and electricity. And so for a while when I learned that, I was like, oh shit, is all this time that I've been thinking I'm feeling ghost is just like me feeling electricity. But I've recently been trying to kind of observe these moments. And I do think there are moments where I am feeling electricity and stuff turning on but I also think there are moments where I am feeling a spirit and I think it's because it's they feel the same but there is a slight difference you know and that makes sense when you think about like how spirits and ghosts and all that they use electricity and you know electronics and stuff to kind of absorb energy from and work so it makes sense that they would have a similar feeling when they're snapped and maybe it's even more than that I don't know but that's just so far been my experience is sort of learning what is my autism and what is my empathy what is my empathic nature my witchy side and right now literally as we speak I'm thinking well maybe they're not hugely separated you know I do think there's a separation. Not all autistic people are witches. Not all witches are artistic, autistic. But I definitely feel like for me, there's a slight separation. But they are. There's a reason that I am empathic and witch and also autistic. And I think it all boils down to my journey and my life and why I'm here. And... Although I'd like to get into that, we're almost at 30 minute mark and that's about when I want to stop these for now. We might go into an hour later on um, when we have guests, it might be longer. I'd love to get my friend Zoe on so we can have one of our hourly long <laughs> conversations about spirituality and the universe and why things are the way they are. Um, but I think next episode, I think I'll talk more about my destiny and the people in my life and why they are in my life. But this gives you a little bit more about me, a little more about my sensitivity and my um, empathy, empathic shit, <laughs> and um, my beliefs. It's literally just the iceberg. There's so much to what I believe and who I am, and I'm excited to go on this journey with you all. So thank you so much for listening, and I hope you tune in to episode two, um, and yee. <laughs> Bye.